Good afternoon, friends. Here is the garden through the window. Not terribly much to see. Nothing green, particularly, except a faded green of the spring lawn, the early spring lawn. I think we've just missed the flights of hopping birds pecking about, looking for worms and grubs, I suspect. So let me turn in here and welcome you to another Word of Gord. This time, speaking about the tsunami in Japan and the after effects as specifically concerning those of us who work, quote unquote, work these disaster scenarios, retrieving or attempting to retrieve the souls who are not only deceased, but overwhelmed by their rapid transition from the physical state into the astral state, and still have a complete or almost complete identification with the physical body. The physical body that may be deep underwater, or trapped under rubble, or broken into many pieces. And if the death transition happens quickly, this is a very common occurrence. Now I've uh, done previous videos where I've uh, mentioned the activity around mass retrievals and earthquakes, fires, wars, shootings, and I will append uh, a couple of these to this video so that those of you who haven't seen them can uh, watch them and appreciate in more detail some of what I'm trying to convey here, because if this is your first encounter with the notion of uh, spirit retrieval, it may seem altogether too wild and crazy to be true. Now, organized mass retrievals from spirit, how long have they been occurring? I'm not sure. Certainly um, for the last 30 years, at least 30 years in this physical time frame, because in spirit they really, they don't have a particular time frame unless they're relating to our linear historical reality, which in the case of disasters and uh, wars and such like destructive scenarios, they have to do. I first came across the notion of mass retrievals in a book by uh, Marilyn, F Marilyn Hughes, sorry, I believe it was her book Crystal River Flowing. That would be at least 20 years ago. And uh, then later in the work of uh, Robert Monroe, and particularly Bruce Mullen. And then my own two books, uh, first, first two books, Eternal Life and How to Enjoy It and More Adventures in Eternity, recount several episodes of uh, just such activity. Firstly, with me learning how to do it, not learning that well. And secondly, later on, at another earthquake, doing actually much, much better. <laughs> and uh, some of the problems you encounter with people's belief systems and uh, whatnot. I won't go into that in detail here, but people's belief systems can hold them back, even when they're confronted with you, uh, a light being, uh, a helper, uh, an angelic being, because they might see you as an angelic being, urging them to come on. They might, for example, not wish to leave their living family members behind. You have to convince them that you can take them to the afterlife, the spirit worlds where they can get plenty of R&R, &R, overcome the trauma, the jagged nerves, the complete overwhelming of their senses, 
and then return fully equipped and trained to visit their grieving loved ones in a much better state than they would have been had they stayed. But they will resist that and uh, for many different reasons and not just love. Sometimes it's a deep fear based on a religious bias which may suggest that you are a demonic being disguised as a being of light, for example. So there are many things to learn for us retrievers and I learned them over time. Ha! <laughs> time. Only time here, not time there. And uh, I'm also doing this for those of you who suspect that you are doing out-of-body retrievals, that you have small fleeting memories, as one friend who emailed me the other day saying, Gord, I woke up with this uh, image of a Japanese child staring me in the face, and I was attempting to do something with this child. I did not know what, but I assumed it was a retrieval. And uh, I've communicated with this friend before, and uh, I think I've more or less convinced him that these fleeting memories are in fact bits and bobs of a retrieval. And so I would like to encourage all of you to uh, fully embrace these partial memories and feelings and notions and intuitions. Uh, if you believe that you're participating in, even in some small way in the retrieval work around disasters, I would say as an experienced, well-versed teacher of these crafts and arts, that you are. It is much easier to go out of body at night than you suspect. Your ego will devise many ways of tricking you into not believing that you're doing it. Dreams, delusions, fantasies, the whole armory of conventional psychology, which denies the existence of the soul and alternate states of reality, shall we say. It will convince you that it's all in your brain. And of course, people like me will tell you that your brain does not create your reality or the number of realities that you operate in. It merely translates the impressions that one has when out of body into an ordered material that is suitable to the brain's education and understanding, which in our society is quite, quite limited. Unless you grew up in one of many, shall we say, third world native societies where shamans are part of the tribe and their teachings are accepted and indeed revered. Those people know what they're doing. Those aborigines, those Brazilian rainforest people, etc., etc. It's only us intellectuals in the West that give grave doubts to these sort of things. We are hobbled by our intellects and our education when it comes to spiritual experience. And I know many of you realize that, but I just want to uh, supply a little more oomph to that understanding. So, for those of you who uh, are looking at this because of your concern about the sufferings in Japan, and I certainly agree with your concern, because I participate in such retrieval work regularly, as do many, many others, I have no lessened perception of the suffering of those still alive, without homes, without families, without much food or shelter, and the possibility of radiation poisoning hovering very close. This is indeed a tragedy of immense proportions. Perhaps not as huge a tragedy as the Asian tsunami of 2004, in which I think around 200,000 transited rather quickly, and I have uh, already done a video on that, which will be appended to this for those of you who haven't seen it. 
and certainly uh, given the millions that died in World War II and Vietnam and Cambodia, for example, it's still pretty small potatoes, disaster-wise, although I uh, do not mean to diminish the sense of suffering and tragedy for those who are embroiled in it. My heart goes out to them, just as yours does. And if you feel that you cannot participate, that you, your doubts or your fears cannot uh, do anything but hobble you in any attempt to participate in mass retrievals, I would urge you to understand that your prayers and your meditations and your sending of love and light from this chakra, the sixth, and this chakra, the fourth, this will not go unnoticed. It will not go unfelt. It will be, it will have, I should say, a lightening and ameliorating effect on the psychic atmosphere, the dark psychic atmosphere generated by the mass fear and anxiety and terror generated by the earthquake and tsunami. It will help both the victims that need to be wrestled out of their uh, limited belief systems. It will help the retrievers do their job. It generally lightens the atmosphere. So please, please feel that you can contribute. You certainly can. And of course, one can always you know, contribute money to the Red Cross when it's not uh, disputing the practical level of that uh, help, too. But I can assure you, this praying, meditating, sending light and love from your heart and also from this chakra, this great sixth chakra, which transcends space and time so well, sometimes referred to in the magical literature as the third eye. It is indeed one, two, three. Very efficient it is too, once you open it. So, uh, another word to those of you who are, and I know from emails and websites I contribute to, such as the uh, afterlifeknowledge.com website, that some of you are planning a mass retrieval in a day or so, or shall I say a group retrieval, I believe 20 or 30 people are planning, and I will be contributing energy to that. Remember, you can, by stating your intention before the beginning of the exercise, you can go backwards in time to the few moments after the earthquake and after the two tsunami. You, there is no need, if you feel that people have been suffering in horror and terror for a week, you can transcend that and go backwards in time to half an hour after it happened and retrieve them then. Because when you're out of body, transcendence of time and space is much, much easier than you think it is. Those of us who are experienced in this know that we can also go forwards in time to disasters that have not yet happened in our linear historical reality and do retrievals there. Surprising as that may seem. So, again, just a few notes for those of you who are, would like to participate and those of you who feel that you're not quite up to it yet. There is a role for everyone, and I encourage you to join the global effort in a psychic as well as a physical way. And until we speak again, much love and light to all of you, no matter of your country of origin, ethnic persuasion, or belief system. I embrace you all. Love.